people deluded. A bit of a random vid. Well, not a random vid, but a bit of everything. I'm, I'm going to offer my thoughts quickly on Bielik, because I watched him against Doncaster earlier. I'm going to offer my thoughts on Aubameyang off the back of playing against Burnley. And what else was I going to speak about? Um, Mavropanos. So we might as well start with Mav. Now, Mavropanos has been unlucky this season, man. He should feel hard done by. He should use this as fuel to have a better next season, but... He had to watch the season unfold from the sidelines. He never really got a chance. I mean, considering that you're looking at the likes of him, Holden, Bielik, um, Chambers as well, probably missing out one. But them sort of centre-halves, there, there's a lot on our books and they're all of the similar sort of age and, and part in their career where they need to find somewhere to stay permanently and play week in, week out. They can't... Can, can't really do this squad player thing one year, loan one year, back again and then the next. So they're all fighting. So it must have been a vote of confidence seeing Chambers go out on loan, seeing Bielik go out on loan. Obviously, Mav Mav he was name dropped by Uno Emre, chance to work under him and cement yourself in your first full season. He was meant to go on, on loan the first January bit he got here and he stayed. Um, he thought it was his chance. He got fit, then he got knocked down again, and he's not been able to really maintain fitness to have a look in. And when he has been fit, because there might be things us fans aren't seeing in terms of his fitness, or he might be behind the others, hasn't got a look in. Um, and he's obviously at that age with the division he's coming. He needs to play. It's all fun and games training and play, training against someone like Aubameyang. But he needs to play. He needs to play against the Sergio Aguero's and the top strikers in the league. Equally, no disrespect, but he needs to be exposed to guys like Rondon that are a handful to play against. Mitrovic, Troy Deeney, which he played against Watford. Jimenez, um, street smart ones like 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 Shane Long, Glenn Murray, you know these sort of things. Guys like today, even before sadly got injured again against Burnley, Wood and Barnes, different sort of strikers with different characteristics. Jamie Vardy, all of these strikers I said are different sort of man. You got some pocket rockets, some foxes in the box, some are better in, at bringing other players in, some you won't see for five minutes and then they put the ball in the back of the net, some are at different ages. That's how you get experience and being able to cope with these different strikers. You only get experience with, with, with playing and he hasn't been fit and he looked distraught when he, I don't know what the injury is at this moment in time, I should have done my research, but he came off obviously against Burnley, substituted for Koscielny and he was doing that with his hands. He looked like someone down on his luck. Now, I know Socrates is sort of his big bro and all the Arsenal players are quite tight. They will support him. But at the end of the day, he's got to be thinking, what is, woe is me, car. He's, he's lost out on a year. He's still largely inexperienced. There's even talk, and I want it myself, of a centre-half. So you're fingering, fingering where does he fit? Um, does he go on loan? Because when he was fit, again, regarding what I said earlier, still valid, but... He wasn't named in the Europa League side, so does it? If push comes to shove, if if all the God forbid, if all the centre halves were to were to drop ill tomorrow, and El ne only I don't know El Nene and Monreal, or El Nene Koscielny and Monreal are only genuine centre half options, Unai Emery has conceded in the work that being the worst case scenario that he'd cut somewhat rather them than Mavropanos. That might not be what he's thinking, but as fans, that's what we can assume. So it's a kick in the teeth. Does he go out on loan next season? I think there's a big shout for him to go out on loan somewhere where he can play week in, week out, hopefully stay fit. Equally, I think he's got a good chance of playing here, staying with the club, learning under Uno Emre, Socrates, taking his chances when it comes. But for me, people, I'm trying to go into next season with a centre-half that can really take us to the next level or someone that's consistent and competent. So assuming he came in, he'd be my first choice. I feel Socrates and Rob Holden would be the people I'm sort of moving with forward with as well would, um, in terms of my top three centre-halves. Mavropanos is still ex inexperienced, so I'd have... Obviously, that's only three centre-halves, so I'd probably keep him in and around the squad and give him some minutes. Koscielny and Monreal, the conversation needs to be had with them people. Do they want to stay f until 2020 when their contract expires? Or would they like to go and go somewhere where they can earn some decent finances because of where they are in their careers? Would they like ba like to go back to France or Spain, respectively, in which one in which Koscielny's actually not been shy on saying he'd be open to finish his, finishing his career at Lorient and maybe one day playing in the MLS, allegedly. Socrates has actually said he wouldn't mind playing in America and he's 31, so there's going to be opportunities to open I think he could play here but equally is it, is it beneficial for him to go out on loan somewhere obviously Bielik, um we'll get on to him but you've got Bielik, you've got um, Chambers you've got Mas you've got Mavropanos you've still even got Rob Holden who I believe should play but he's still vastly inexperienced 
are we going to cut some loose? Are they going to be used in the squad? Are they going to make it here? Because Bielik and Chambers, for example, Bielik's been converted into a centre-half, but he's excelled for Charlton in defensive mid and at centre-half. Chambers has went as to go on loan ideally in, in, in the heart of the defence, but he's done well at not only in defence, but primarily and best performance is probably in central midfield. Could they be used in the squad of some sorts? I believe so, but Uno Emre, does he want to sell them to raise funds? Only he can answer that. On on to Bielik, though, I think he should be given a chance next season. I, I do think people need to be wary of when they hype players because I do think one one feel I still see in his game, and I have seen it from about, what was it? Was it 2015 when we played Lens in pre-season? I like that he's casual on the ball and he's, and he's, and he's very composed, but he's got that Maitland-Niles thing at times not really concentrating. And I've got it here, people. I was watching against Doncaster. Um... The bits I wanted to actually highlight. Where are where are they? Forgive me, people. I'm on the wrong word document. Yeah, here we go. In the forty second minute, towards the end of the half, where you have to keep your standards up, and he was playing quite well, defending well, playing out from the back well. But forty second minute, he's bringing it out from the back five yard passes under hit. They countered, puts his team under pressure. It amounted to nothing, but in the prem that could. So that that happened. Similar similar thing happened in the forty sixth minute. And I, f- and I also feel in the 53rd, something like that happened as well. So there was three incidences. You could say I'm cherry-picking because obviously I'm watching him specifically. For the goal as well, I don't feel it's necessarily his fault. The one that Charlton did concede, don't feel it's his fault. But um, he actually wins the ball and him and along with a couple of the Charlton guys, it's like Bielik wins the first challenge and they're not doing enough to kind of stop it. The ball eventually ends up in the back of the net. Um, so these are the things you would have to learn learn about. But you've seen this season... Obviously, people say League One to the Prem is a big jump, and it is, but Dele Alli did it, and you never know and if players get chances. I think centre-half, more, more so defensive mid as well, he could be utilised. He's only lacking experience um, in terms of top-level experience. I think he's very composed. I think he is. The only thing is he's a bit quite slow on the turn, but he's good in the challenge. He's comfortable bringing it out from the back. I think he's a Uno Emre sort of player, and he's got youth on his side. I think he's got a year left or so on his deal at Arsenal, or two years, um, so it's up to him. If Charlton could get promoted, and I think it was actually the playoffs I'm watching them in, I should know this, but they can actually get promoted. Does he want to stay there in the championship or does he want to get a loan spell to Germany or somewhere? I think he should have went. Um, he's actually had a decent year and he's going to be playing in the in the Euros, under 21 Euros. If he excels in that, maybe some other clubs are interested and want to do business with him. Because if I was a club looking in, I'd think Bielik is one of them. You look at him, possibly is it Gerhi, Gerhi I can't say his name, of Chelsea... Reese James, and I could say several ones. You look at these players that are either on loan or have potential to play and be of a big, better standard, and if you could kind of tempt them into your club, you can you can have some competent players there that could be sold on for profit, and that's the sort of angle the German clubs are looking at. So that's my thoughts in regards to Bielik. And again, similar to what I said about Mavropanos, he's got to ask Uno Emre, honestly, how much does can he feature in your team or is he rating him? I remember reading some comments when he went to Charlton that he never had a conversation with Uno Emery. Now I think Uno Emery is giving scouting reports, but if he's not, would you want to go? Wouldn't you want to leave people? And it's it kind of naive for me and and you lot to even think all of them are gonna blow here, people. And finally, I just wanted to offer some thoughts on Obamia. Now I think that forgive me if I'm wrong, but is the top goal scoring thing not gonna be shared, people? The award for top goal scoring, which I'm sure Mane's got twenty two, Salah's got twenty two, and Obamia has got twenty two, and it's brilliant, man. It's it's, it's proper brilliant. From an Arsenal perspective, I haven't seen a player capable of getting twenty goals in the longest in the in a very long time, people. I know a bad man has his criticisms. In fact, today against Burnley, terrific brace and then he missed a sitter. And he has missed some clangers and he will continue to miss clangers and it it doesn't make sense how someone who's so potent in, in front of goal and someone who's statistically an ice cold killer in front of goal and has been for Arsenal in his first full season here and last season and at all his clubs since he he went up a level as a player, how does he miss some of these chances? It's baffling. He could have won this award outright, and it's probably he's only got himself to blame that he ain't won it. To be fair with you, uh, based on today's um today's set of people, it, I love Aubameyang, man. I think he is clinical. Of course, people. If you if you I'll speak about it in a sec, but he does miss a lot of chances. Of course, people. How can how can I sit here and say someone that that misses so many of these sort of schoolboy chances, but yet scores them? How can he be clinical? We we know he's up there for big chances made, missed and stuff. 
Now, if you disregard today, I know he's got 31 goals, people. He probably could have had 40-50 if, if he could finish consistently them sort of chances because he's a potent finisher and he's shown it. But he's a bit of a weird one. I think he's clinical. On, the same, on one hand, I don't think he's clinical, clearly, because he misses all these chances. But on the other hand, how can he not be clinical? Statistically, he's been a gunman since he's come to Arsenal. He's been a shooter for his whole career since he's gone up that level. Statistically, the goals he scored for Arsenal have been amazing. I also have to discount the fact I feel with Messi and Ronaldo, obviously we're not comparing him to that. People don't look at players for what they are. OK, he should miss score these chances. OK, his general play should be a bit better. But at the end of the day, he's a goal scorer. He's always been that 20 league goals. That's what he's about. Like, he's not about nothing else. Um, and he is human. So you have to just allow people sometimes rather than always thinking about what a person isn't. Um, prior to this, I actually was going to do a video about this, people. So obviously with Salah playing today against Wolves and Aubameyang playing, I'm not sure of the statistics. But prior to today, if we can all just be using our common sense, um, Salah's up there for goal scored, but he's taken 128 shots. Aubameyang was ninth on the stats list with 82, and he's our top goal scorer. So on one hand, that could show you someone wasteful. On the other hand, it could show you someone that if he was more clinical, how many goals he could have. Or it could also show you someone that the approach of you don't buy a raffle ticket, you don't win the lottery. So he's buying more opportunities, so there's higher probability of scoring. So there's that. Big chances. We know Aubameyang's missed some sitters, so he was up there... Um, he um big chances miss. He had twenty. He had twenty. Wilson was first. Obam and not Obam. Man. Lacazette was ninth. Um. Yeah, about. Yeah, Obam. Lacazette was ninth. Um. Yeah, I'm not sure where Kane was for touches as well because Aubameyang, we know his general play isn't quite there. I think it's better than people give him credit for, but it's also an interesting debate. Is um he wasn't in the top twenty. Um Lacazette Lacazette was his fifteenth, I believe. Hazard and Delafeo are up there as well, man. So it shows you that he's not he's up there for goals scored, he's up there for chances missed, but he's not up there for touches. That shows you that's someone whose general play isn't gonna be the Lacazette. It's putting the balls in the back of the net. I do think he needs to improve his general like I said, I don't think it's as bad as people state, but he do does need to add some variety into his game. How much variety I'm not sure because realistically people is it fair or is it even sensible because he's what he's getting on, he's what, let's say twenty seven, twenty eight no, he's not even that. He's 29, I swear, people. 29, 30 now, Aubameyang. So we, how much can a leopard change their spots? And to a degree, he's always been about goals. If we had potent wingers that were threats, if we had Lacazette in the squad that can interchange with Aubameyang, if we had the midfielders and everything else in place, it wouldn't be a thing because it's a squad game. Aubameyang's strengths are goal scoring. Goals win you games. When, obviously, the game needs to be set up in a certain way, but that's why you have Lacazette or you have wingers or goal-scoring midfielders or people that can do other things when other players aren't at it, people. Because, like I said, I get it. He should be able to do certain other things. But on the other hand, a squad, it's like a, it's like, it's like almost... your Managers are almost plumbers or, or, or any sort of tradesman. You have, for every game... You might need a different tool. For some minutes, you might need a... Again, this is a poor example, but you might need a saw this time. Then you might need a saw that's a bit more precise. Then you might need a an instrument that's a bit more cleaner. Someone's there, you might not need a drill. Some jobs you will. Do you see what I'm saying? A plumber, obviously, some jobs he probably uses the same tools. But sometimes there's going to be a drill. There's going to be a plunger. There's going to be a ladder. There's, there's gonna He's going to need a skateboard to, to get underneath or whatever. You get the point. Different games, different components. I sound like Wenger with these examples, but yeah, people, we've spoken about Bielik playing today against Doncaster, Aubameyang allegedly winning the top golden boot or whatever, if it does go, if it does get shared and it doesn't go down to games played or some other statistics, and obviously sympathy with Mavropanos, people. On that note, there's not that much more to say, so I'm going to keep it kicking. People, DG, I'm out.